Whoa. And flies. Red's hitting buttons. You good, Mr. Scott? Huh? You good. I looked up and said he's running off with lantern flies. I'll get back up here. Hello, and welcome to the Shippensburg School District Committee of the Whole Meeting. I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent August. Thank you, Mr. Severly. Um, two presentations tonight, um, uh, we hope, <laughs> I should probably say. Uh, we're going to start off with um, school, uh, looking at school start time. Um, as a recommendation coming out of the outreach committee um, to explore the idea of um, perhaps adjusting our start times uh, for secondary students uh, and elementary. Um, Mrs. DeLong has prepared uh, just kind of an informational introductory <coughs> presentation that kind of goes through a lot of the uh, research behind it and, and potential benefits as well as some of the challenges uh, you know, this is really about us exploring the idea coming out of the committee. Um, it's not necessarily a commitment one way or the other, but it, it is to start a dialogue and a discussion uh, among the board and, and to, to allow us to uh, get, get some traction on a, a potential uh, change that might benefit students. So without further ado, turn it over to uh, Mrs. DeLong. By the way, the screen is set on this. It's not set up. We need to. I can change that. Ms. Uh, DeLong, do you, uh, maybe we can switch gears since our team is here? Yes. <laughs> okay. So we're going to call an audible <laughs> and introduce um, our high school STEM club, uh, STEM team. If you guys want to come forward and Talk a little bit about uh, some of the awesome things that you've been doing. I apologize for our tardiness. We were <laughs> making sure we had a game plan and we knew which order we were speaking in. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Melinda Fowler. Um, I am a technology teacher here at the high school um, and I am the STEM team advisor. Uh, this is my <clears throat> I believe fifth year doing this. Prior to this, Mr. Schwartz, our other tech ed teacher, was doing it. Um, and Shippensburg has been participating in the STEM team or Governor STEM Challenge for about 10 years now. Um, and so the state of Pennsylvania, through the governor's office, challenges high school students uh, in a group of five uh, to create something blanket statement that will better the lives of Pennsylvanians. Uh, and so that can be quite a challenge to figure out what that something is. Um, and thankfully, the state does provide us with a budget for that. So they give us $600 to spend um, to accomplish our task, whatever we decide it may be. Um, and our team is here today to talk to you about what they created this year. Um, and so the members of the team, and I'm just going to go in order they're standing, Brady Carr, Jacob Weiss, Elijah Vasquez, Addison Powell, and then um, standing over there in the background, trying not to be noticed, is our um, engineering support from Letterkenny, Mr. G. Um, they, Letterkenny as a whole has really uh, been wonderful at making sure that we have things that we need in our engineering department. Um, and so he is kind of sort of on permanent release to us as much as we want him, and we have been very grateful for him. So I'm gonna step back and let the students speak. I was a little concerned that he looked older than <laughs> our regular high school students, so I'm a bit relieved. <laughs> All right, so so with our project, we've focused on a couple different things. We yeah, created a list of things that we had ideas for and things we could have used to better the lives. We thought about the yeah, we thought about using a barcode system to better manage the school through uh, possibly tracking when kids like go to the bathroom using like a barcode system that would be similar to our IDs. We also just uh, we also thought about how we could use could better the storage on buses to help uh, prevent just the constant crowdedness uh, 
off the buses. And in the end, we ended up uh, focusing on the uh, issues with the uh, spotted lanternflies and possible eradication methods for them. I'll hand this over to Brady Carr. Hello, good evening. I'm Brady Carr. So the spotted lanternflies have been an invasive species that's plagued Pennsylvania for almost a decade now. They arrived around 2015 in the state. They have been damaging crops, they've taken away jobs from different farming, and they've just basically been a plague to anything agriculture-wise to the species and people of Pennsylvania. Our goal was to try to find a way to help eradicate and remove a part of the population. A good way to do that would be to remove the eggs and just the general bugs of the population of the lanternflies in the forest of Pennsylvania. So our goal was to try to find a way to design a system that could contain or capture the, egg, the eggs and eliminate them. Well, some of the stuff that we were originally thinking of using were um, radiation, RF rays, and trying to find a way to essentially microwave and destroy eggs or part of the bugs. But based on testing, we realized that this would be way too dangerous to work. We do not have the conditions to try to test and actually use these, and these would be dangerous for the environment <laughs> in a whole if we tried to use them. So we instead worked in a way of electricity to try to zap and remove the bugs in an in a environment. I'm going to pass it over to um, Jacob Weiss for more information. So we made a prototype that would be able to use a like model um, AI model to recognize the bugs using image recognition uh, that would be connected to cameras that would be able to differentiate from lantern flies and other native species to Pennsylvania and once it was able to see a lantern fly it would then activate like a zapping mechanism that would essentially eradicate the lantern fly that caught in, got caught in the trap. Um, uh, in practice, this worked pretty well. We, that's pretty much all. I'd like to hand this off to Addison Powell. So pretty much, after doing some research, we realized that scent was the big part of, we got spotted lantern flies to get to this. So we decided on experiment essential oil just by diffusing it into the air, they will be naturally attracted to it. So basically, we created a uh, AI-powered bug zapper. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it's active right now. No. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I didn't make it active, but <laughs> we have a, we need a power cord. Okay. Um, and so if you guys have any questions, these guys are pretty knowledgeable about what they're talking about, and we'll answer them readily. Well, I, for one, are, I'm <coughs> glad that you abandoned the radiation one because that's how you get giant moths <laughs> <laughs> ravaging the forest. So good job not doing that. Are you competing against other schools, you said? Yes. Um, we submitted uh, four items, a paper, a budget, um, a digital poster, and a video presentation, and they go off to the state. The state does a judging, and then we are notified if we get to move forward or not. Um, and kind of where we lie then. Are you an after school club or, or not? Um, <clears throat> we should be. But um, <laughs> the wonderful people standing behind me are in every sport or club in this building. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so uh, we meet during Flex, um, and we spent a lot of time over winter break on Google Meet doing this virtually. Um, <coughs> while all of us had COVID, it was really fun. <clears throat> and I use that term loosely. <laughs> so I see you, your, your name STEM, your STEM team. Correct. So that's not related to our STEM here, is it? It is. Absolutely. It's a, an extension of those programs, um, uh, probably way deeper <laughs> on, in some, <laughs> some aspects. But, uh, you, know, you know, it's clearly the, the students that, that, you know, find that to be engaging and, and you know, perhaps a career um, you know, have this opportunity to, to really, I guess, jump into the deep end of STEM. And, and I think you've heard a lot about design as well. Um, you know, those two things seem to go hand in hand with, with this particular project. So, um, <coughs> cool. Thanks for being here. Um, 
did I did I miss the part on how your device uh, distinguishes lantern flies from any other flying critter? I apologize for uh, being a little brief with it, but we would essentially use a Raspberry Pi, which is like a tiny little computer, uh, and it would be have a coded onto it a AI model that uses image recognition to well, which is essentially showing the AI thousands of pictures of AI like of lanternflies, and a way to test if it works in practice is by showing it like a picture of like let's say a monarch butterfly, and it would we would ask the question is this a lantern a spotted lanternfly and they would say no if they had enough images and yes if they didn't have enough images. So what's going to happen is to recognize the lanternfly, we would attach cameras to the prototype. And essentially, uh, using the AI model, it would be able to differentiate what a lanternfly is to other native species of Pennsylvania. OK, so yeah, that's really cool. Um, I, <laughs> so you're, you're, you're using the, like, the future conditional. So have you, have you already tested it, or you uh, haven't not, tested not it? Yet. We, okay. we have the device, but we haven't been able to uh, attach it to the prototype yet. Gotcha. All right, cool. So does that prototype have like cameras on it somewhere? OK. <clears throat> That's just the zapping part? Correct. OK. Not the camera part. You can tell I'm a social worker and not a scientist. <laughs> So when we're talking about budget, so what is the cost of the prototype? And if you wanted to bring it completely to fruition, like what would the cost of the actual element be? So uh, the state gives us $600. Um, we spent that a bunch of different ways, partially on our attire this evening, because um, we had some leftovers. Um, and then we spent roughly $150 on what you're seeing in front of you now. To, and then the AI portion is considerably more expensive and about another $600 on top uh, for initialization. Um, and then once you move past initialization, uh, which is the teaching, which is mostly labor intensive, it gets much cheaper. Um, do you remember? <laughs> so uh, we, the Raspberry Pi costed around like $300, like all of the components that we bought for it. Uh, cost three hundred dollars, so that's pretty much it for the Raspberry Pi. We camera system costed like probably well, sorry, I included the camera system. The uh, two hundred is like one hundred and fifty dollars for the Raspberry Pi, like one hundred dollars <coughs> for the camera. That's pretty much it. Is there any other item on the market like this? Mr. G found a student in New Jersey who created it, an exact replica of this using an umbrella, like a patio umbrella, um, and it's solar powered. And we were unintentionally creating them at the same time. And she won the New Jersey State Science Fair with her. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know that's a thing, right? Like a lot of famous uh, in, in Inventions were made like simultaneously. There seemed to be like something in the ether, and like you know, multiple groups that uh, unwittingly uh, inventing the same thing at the same time. I I hope you guys like create a video or something of this in action and share it with us later because I'd really like to see it. I'm just trying to imagine in my head uh, what it looks like. Like if you got like I don't know 20 critters in there at once. Like can it does it does it somehow know you know does that work? Like does it kill them all or does it like not kill them because it doesn't look like I don't know I just I think it's really interesting and I hope you um, share a video that has like a test or something with us later that'd be awesome um, so mr. August does have a copy of our um, video presentation um, which is how we were invited here today I was just kind of showing off my kids and he went cool come show the board um, <laughs> and so he will probably share that with you it, it's in the it's there's a link in the uh, agenda manager um, and then once we attach both objects together, we can definitely follow up with you. What have, what have you, you said you've been in existence for a few years? <laughs> yeah. Yes. But what, uh, um, you're not, 
Are you into electronics or bug killing? Which, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as a STEM team, um, we create a brand new product every year. Um, and so come August, these guys are in this for life. They don't know that, but now they do. Um, <laughs> and they're here till they graduate with me. Um, and so next year we'll, we'll come up with a brand new problem to solve and fix it, hopefully. Okay. So in the past, Shippensburg has made um, mostly energy conservation items, which is kind of interesting. Um, but when Mr. Swartz um, was at the helm, his kids made a solar powered composter because composting in the winter in Pennsylvania is very difficult because it needs that heat from the sun to kind of do it, composting itself. Um, and then they worked with the Shippensburg Police Department to create a window shade that you could use on the driver's window, you know, because one of the kids, his mom was in an accident on 83 or 81 there coming up over the hill in Newville. You know, I think everybody knows somebody who's been in some kind of unfortunate accident there because uh, the sun is blinding. Um, and then <coughs> when I took over, we have uh, worked on a roof mounted wind turbine. So kind of taking the idea of roof mounted solar power to wind. Um, and then during COVID years, we tried to tackle the bathroom vandalism with bathroom burglar alarms that were interconnected so that hopefully um, somebody knew what was happening when it was happening and we could apprehend the doer. Do you have yours designed to work remotely as well, like either solar or battery so it can go afield? I think that's the goal. Okay. <laughs> Very good. So, and is it is the camera and AI trained to just find the the adult lantern flies, or does it do just does it do the like the nymph stage too when they're the little? So originally with the project, we were going to do a infertilization type thing where it would be able to like recognize the eggs, but we found that the source of the problem was more of the adults itself because that was really causing the damage. So it's probably going to be, uh, well, it will be mostly trained to uh, locate the adults. So have you done the, so, so well, I'm hearing a lot of different things. So there's some coding or, or coding that's going to happen? Has it happened yet? or So the coding hasn't happened yet because it's a very extensive process, coding an entire AI model. Um, it takes thousand, like a, an entire month for some companies to create an AI model. Um, but inherently, yes, it will like be done probably by next year, but it will take a little bit more time for the coding itself. Okay, and who, who, whom among you is going to be doing that coding? Um, All of you? We probably will be working on it as a group and working together because we all have some coding knowledge to an extent. Well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I mean, I think this is, you know, one of those things that, you know, obviously when I heard about it, I, I you know, sat up in my chair, um, you know, because this is exactly what, what we want our kids doing. Uh, on a regular basis, so I thank you all for coming, Ms. Fowler. Thank you for uh, for doing this and putting your time in. H how many total hours do you think you, you've put into this project to date? You know, like all like the sum total of of your efforts. Well, we uh, started meeting in August, that first week of school, um, and then the students. Um, that were not a part of the team last year had to be interviewed, um, which slowed us down slightly. Um, but since the first week of October, when the entire team was formed, we've met at least once a week for at least an hour every week since then. And then we met twice over winter break. Um, <laughs> we met once on a snow day the one time. <laughs> yes, we also met on a snow day one day. Um, and so I'm going to say at least 100 hours. And have you heard back from the state yet? Not yet. Okay. Um, I do know that uh, from years past, it takes them probably till July to let us know one way or the other, unfortunately. They're working on volunteer graders that are engineers, aren't okay. great time managers. Are, are they grading, are they grading like the idea or are they grading like the finished product? Uh, it depends um, on how we um, 
enter the project. Um, and so this year we entered it as an unfinished prototype. Um, and so it will go into other, or into the same category as others in the same boat as we are. Okay. So, I, yeah, thank you so much. I, I, I didn't say your name. I'm sorry, sir. What, what, this is Mr. G. Mr. G. Uh, Chris you're, Gigliotti. You're, you're lent from Letter Kenny? Correct. I want to thank you for spending the time and effort to volunteer. I take it to volunteer or a minimum amount of money. <laughs> a little bit of both. Letter Kenny is actually allowing me time during my normal work hours to come <laughs> and mentor the, the students. I still have to have the will and the want. I want to thank you for that. My, my pleasure. I, it is through a similar kind of program that got me interested in, to, uh, in, in engineering. So I, I really enjoy working with the students. It reminds me of how I got into engineering. Yeah, so thank, thank you so much. I mean, I mean, all the dimensions of this between the design, the, the science, the coding, the possible careers, connections to the community. I mean, it just ticks a lot of awesome things, and, you know, and I can't gush about you enough. Uh, thank you all. And clearly we are very, like, interested in this, so please keep us informed <laughs> and updated. <laughs> we will. Thank you. I want one for my yard. At this time, we'll turn it over back to Mrs. DeLong. Yep, we're ready now. Technology is ready. So I have my notes on one screen and my slides on the other. So good evening, everybody. So I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about some information about uh, late start for secondary students. Um, so the outreach committee expressed some interest in considering a later start time for our secondary students. And so this uh, is a presentation just to talk a little bit about some of the um, benefits and research behind the idea of a later start time at the secondary level. So as a reminder, uh, the district has our two overarching strategic goals uh, that we are always focusing on, which is to increase student engagement and also well-being. So whenever we consider any potential changes or initiatives in the district, we want to be sure that we are always keeping these goals as our North Star. So when considering a late start at the secondary level, we know that rested students are ready students. Um, so students who have adequate sleep are more engaged and they're ready to learn. Um, so when you're thinking about what the district can do to support teens getting more sleep so that they're more engaged and have an increased well-being, one of the things we can consider is a later start time for our secondary students. So this infograph is from the National Sleep Foundation, um, and it shows us a few things here. Uh, one of the things it shows us is that teenagers need at least eight and a half to nine and a half hours of sleep each night at a minimum. Research shows us that two thirds of high school students get less than seven hours of sleep a night. And we also see here that 43% of public high schools start before 8 a.m. And just to dig down a little bit deeper, so that's talking about U.S. schools, but we live in Pennsylvania, so what's the landscape here in Pennsylvania? Um, there was a study that was done, and of 491 secondary schools that have consistent start times for secondary buildings, um, they found that um, uh, 77 of the districts start between 7 a.m. and 7.29 a.m., so that's like 15.7%, and it's interesting to know that that's where we fall in that first 15%. Um, 300 in school districts, 307 school districts start between 7.30 and 7.59, which is 62.5% of the high schools in Pennsylvania. And then 99% uh, or 99 schools start between 8 and 8.29, which is 20% of the schools. And then there are eight school districts who start at 8.30 or later, which is 1.6% of the 491 schools in Pennsylvania. And then finally, the last little alarm clock there shows us that 33% of teens report falling asleep in school. 
And I always like to just put the caveat in there that that's the number of students who report that they fall asleep. <laughs> I would aim to say that there could be more who don't admit it. Okay. So the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention and the American Medical Association all recommend that middle and high schools start class no earlier than 8.30 a.m. to allow students to get healthy sleep. And if you remember, back to what I just said, 1.6% of schools in Pennsylvania start after 8.30. Public health officials and the medical community at large have declared that a public health crisis of epidemic proportions is affecting our American adolescents. And it is the problem that most adolescents do not get enough sleep, which leads to a myriad of mental, behavioral, and physical effects, as well as public safety concerns. Adolescent sleep needs are driven by a temporary biological slit shift in sleep onset and wake times that occurs concurrently with the onset of puberty and ends in early adulthood. So early start times run counter to this biological condition and can contribute substantially to adolescent sleep deprivation. This insufficient sleep is associated with increases in obesity, migraines, fighting, risk-taking behavior, and drug and alcohol use in students. One of the ways to address this lack of sleep that garners the most attention and has the greatest potential to impact large numbers of students at the same time has been and has also been endorsed by numerous professional organizations is delaying the secondary start time of schools. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Medical Association were among the first organizations to call for an 8.30 a.m. start time and many other uh, admin, uh, groups have followed. According to researchers at the University of Minnesota and the CDC, a later start time decreases teen depression, substance abuse, and dependency on caffeinated beverages. So as our district's strategic goals are to increase student engagement and well-being, let's consider some data that directly relates to these goals. In a three-year study conducted at the University of Minnesota's College of Education and Human Development, researchers analyzed the impact of a later school start time on over 9,000 students across eight schools and in five districts. The study population included both city and suburban communities with varying incomes, diverse race and ethnicities, and a range of graduation rates. The students attended schools in Minnesota, Colorado, and Wyoming. So first, the team found that the high schools with a start time of 8.30 or later allowed for more than 60% of students to obtain at least eight hours of sleep per night. In light of this, the study also found that teens who got less than eight hours of sleep reported significantly higher levels of, or higher symptoms of depression, greater use of caffeine, and signs that they were at greater risk for making poor choices for substance, substance abuse. On the academic plane, students with start times of 8.35 a.m. or later showed significantly positive improvement in performance on state and national tests, attendance and tardiness, and grades in their core subject areas. And then finally, with respect to drivers ages 16 to 18 years old, the number of car crashes reduced by 70% when school start times uh, changed from 7.35 a.m. to 8.55 a.m. And then the attendance rates for students in grades 9, 10, and 11 improved significantly over a five-year period with the highest improvement for ninth graders. Additionally, the students reported that they continue to get one hour more sleep each night compared to the students whose school day started an hour earlier. The later start times are also linked to a reduction in athletic injuries and an increase in performance for the well-rested teens.
So this next slide is um, a video, and it's a um, the presenter is a woman whose name is Wendy Troxel, and she is um, a PhD senior behavioral and social scientist at the RAND Corporation, and she was also a member of the Pennsylvania Advisory Co Committee to the Later School Start Times at Secondary Schools Joint State Government Commission Report, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So I'm not going to show you the whole video, but I'm just going to start it about six and a half minutes in where she talks about uh, the benefits of a later start time for her students. I would encourage you to go back though and watch the beginning of the video because she's also a parent of a teenager and she talks about her own experiences of trying to get her kid up out of bed to go to school in the morning and she's like, wait, why am I doing this? I'm a sleep scientist, I know better than this. So it's just interesting, but I'm gonna start it at six minutes and 50 seconds here. produced tremendous science showing the tremendous benefits of later start times. <coughs> the findings are unequivocal. And as a sleep scientist, I rarely get to speak with that kind of certainty. Teens from districts with later start times get more sleep. To the naysayers who may think that if schools start later, teens will just stay up later. The truth is, their bedtimes stay the same, but their wake-up times get extended resulting in more sleep. They're more likely to show up for school. School absences dropped by 25% in one district, and they're less likely to drop out. Not surprisingly, they do better academically. So this has real implications for reducing the achievement gap. Standardized test scores in math and reading go up by two to three percentage points. That's as powerful as reducing class sizes by one-third fewer students, or replacing a so-so teacher in the classroom with a truly outstanding one. Their mental and physical health improves, and even their families are happier. I mean, who wouldn't enjoy a little more pleasantness from our teens and a little less crankiness? Even their communities are safer because car crash rates go down a 70% reduction in one district. Now, given these tremendous benefits, you might think, well, this is a no-brainer, right? So why have we, as a society, failed to heed this call? Often the argument against later start times goes something like this. Why should we delay start times for teenagers? We need to toughen them up so they're ready for the real world. But that's like saying to the parent of a two-year-old, don't let Johnny nap, or he won't be ready for kindergarten. <laughs> Delaying start times also presents many logistical challenges, not just for students and their families, but for communities as a whole. Updating bus routes, increased transportation costs, impact on sports, care before or after school, these are the same concerns that come up in district after district, time and again around the country, as school start times are debated. And they're legitimate concerns. But these are problems we have to work through. They are not valid excuses for failing to do the right thing for our children, which is to start middle and high schools no earlier than 8.30 a.m. And in districts around the country, big and small, who have made this change, they've found that these fears are often unfounded and far outweighed by the tremendous benefits for our student health and performance and our collective public safety. I'll stop it right there. Times. Okay, so here is a link um, to this report. Oop, now it's playing on my other computer, sorry. <laughs> Um, so this is the um, Pennsylvania Joint State Government Commission report. So in October of 2019, the Pennsylvania Joint State Government Commission released a report that was entitled Sleep Deprivation in Adolescence, the Case for Delaying Secondary School Start Times. So this link com 
um, contains um, a one-page summary of the report, and then you can read the whole uh, report if you'd like, which is linked on the final slide. It's 92 pages long, so you might want to just check out the white page here that's on, on this slide. Um, but this report explains that, um, that what we talked about earlier, which is these adolescent sleep needs are driven by the biological sleep shift that occurs um, in puberty and then ends in early adult time or adulthood. And so um, having an early start time runs counter to that biological condition that exists in these teenagers. Um, and so the report also uh, links back to the insufficient sleep affecting the adolescent school performance in terms of cognitive function and performance, graduation rates, attendance, and tardiness, the risks of adolescent motor vehicle accidents, athletic injuries, um, adolescent behavioral health in terms of poor self-esteem, risk-taking behavior, crime and delinquency, um, adolescent mental health in terms of affect and mood, anxiety, depression, suicidality, and adolescent physical health in terms of um, uh, disease and risk of immune system compromise. So the report also reviews the common perceived challenges that could be encountered in efforts to delay secondary school start times. Um, and these challenges are include um, some things that we see here. You know, it could be, whoops, I changed it on the wrong one. So, you know, there are things like scheduling conflicts. And so, um, you know, there might be, um, Scheduling difficulties that arrive from athletic or academic competitions, extracurricular activities, um, and that you know may, might require an earlier dismissal. And then we also have to consider students who attend the the FCCTC. Um, later start times likely mean uh, more buses on the road later in the day, which could create more traffic or increase travel delays. Um, so the district will need to consider a thorough transportation study to determine the optimal timing and routing of buses, um, including you know things to consider like bus driver um, shortages or transportation man mandates, um, coordination and logistics. Um, some families may rely on older students to care for younger siblings after school, and this might make it more difficult if high schools dismiss later than elementary or middle schools. Um, however, an earlier start time for elementary students might reduce the need for child care before school. Um, so the report addresses many of these concerns um, and other perceived challenges, and they do offer solutions. So maybe you're wondering, um, are there other local school districts who've been able to um, successfully adjust their start times? Um, so I just pulled three. There are three local school districts who have recently implemented changes. Um, State College made the change in 2018. So their um, elementary schools now start at 810. Their middle school and high school both start at 840. Uh, Mechanicsburg Area School District made the change in 2018. Um, their elementary start at 740 and go to 235, and then the high school starts at 820 and goes to 330, and then the middle school starts at 830 and goes till 330. And then Tuscarora School District, um, they, uh, their high school starts at 826 and goes until 313. Middle school starts at 8 o'clock and goes to 322, and then their elementary schools start at 720 and end at 210. Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah. I'm curious how Tuscarora manages their um, career center folks. They go to the same one that the so one that we do. So I, I actually talked to their superintendent, Dr. Goots, and, and they've been doing this for quite some time. Um, you know, when I was dialoguing with him, he was like, this is old news for us. Um, they solve that problem by having their, their uh, career technical center students ride their elementary run. Um, and so they, they still can get there and back. Um, and you know, I know that may make some folks nervous, you know, made me nervous when I heard that. Um, you know, he, he reported to me that they don't have any issues with it and that it just works. So, great, thanks. Mm -hmm. So as we consider what's best for Shippensburg Area School District, um, we'll be undertaking the following um, steps that are here on this slide. So we'll, um, over the summer and fall of this academic year, we'll review some possible schedules at the high school, middle school, and elementary schools. 
Um, we will, in the fall, conduct some student staff and community surveys and hold some school and community meetings. Um, we'll review transportation schedules and then also review athletic and extracurricular schedules. And, and I would just say, you know, that all that is contingent upon you know, the, the board wanting to explore this um, and, and having the administration gather up some information to kind of see what it could look like. You know, if, if you know, the, the board in this, you know, this time period or future one is, is of a mind that we don't want to change that, then, then we will save some t effort on our part. But, uh, you know, this is kind of, you know, that timeline is kind of what came from the, the committee um, that, that first discussed this. What's the teacher saying? I'm sorry, sir? What are the teachers saying? So we haven't asked them quite yet. Um, the one teacher that was at the committee meeting um, was, she was an elementary teacher. She was, I think, emphatically on board. Um, you know, the, the elementary teacher, at least that one, reported that. And, and I, as an elementary principal, I can agree, because um, I've observed it too. Uh, the, the sweet spot for elementary instruction is the morning, and, and there's a lot of competition around what subjects should be taught in the morning, because the afternoon, you know, some of our younger kids um, kind of run out of steam when it comes to concentration. So, uh, Mr. Scott, we, we would not move forward without you know, getting some feedback from our staff. I mean, my, my goal is to, to, to mirror what we want our kids to do, to have a collaborative process uh, around solving a potential problem. So, you know, we definitely want to hear from all the stakeholders, you know, and, and make a, an informed decision. Yeah, I just, since I'm on the hour, you I guess I'm the chair. Um, this is just like the first no decisions have been made. This is just information gathering. That's where we are right now. Um, and you can see from the previous slide, you know, there's, there will be lots of opportunities to get feedback from the community, from teachers, from other staff, any stakeholders are involved. So um, uh, I, I thank you. That was very, I think it was a compelling presentation though. And I think it's something we definitely should look at, but there are, um, as you pointed out, there's still a ton of variables mm -hmm. you have to figure out in the process. Um, but yeah, and, and the earliest that we would even consider doing this would be the 25, 26 school year. This isn't something that, that we would just you know jump into the deep end and and just next make year. it work. It'd be next year. Uh, the year after, Fred. Mm -hmm. So we we would still probably be trying to work out schedules and, and make sure that we have it exactly the way we want it before we would implement. I think it's important to hear from students too, um, especially our middle and high school students. Um, I don't picture a lot of pushback on them getting to sleep in uh, when you ask them, but um, they're another important. It's gonna be interesting to find out, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, um, so this slideshow is linked into the agenda manager and all the links are live. And you can, if you want to click on any of them, you can pull up the report. Um, this is a radio episode that um, was um, recorded in 2020 with um, um, the some people from the community who are scientists and some other districts who've made some changes. And then finally, this link takes you to um, a resource on a website called Start School Later, which is a nonprofit organization um, that just kind of tries to bring awareness to starting school later. And when you click on the link, it takes you to this table of contents. And then each one of these is a link that takes you to um, more scholarly articles. So if you want to read more about start times in school, um, there are hours of reading there for you if you're interested and you want to know more information um, about it. So, and, and I would hazard a guess if it's on this, that website, the research is indicating that it's a good thing. Yes, it is. It's all supportive. Mrs. Dong, I just did want to say that I appreciated how you highlighted like some of the uh, potential positive impacts that the students on their health and their sleep pattern patterns and just kind of high it kind of highlights and our strategic plan like for our students and some of the concerns that we currently have with closing some of those learning gaps and with uh, student engagement but um, and along with like not 
ignoring like there are some perceived obstacles that we do need to work through but um, there's still a lot of work to be done and information to be gathered but again like this is just a conversation uh, what this would or could look like for Shippensburg. My if pleasure. I, if I could quickly again thanks for the presentation. Um, first time that I heard about this I was like this is just makes no sense to me but then as you like really do the, the the research on it and everything it's really like there's a compelling argument to be made for this so I'm glad that we're at least exploring it um, and going through as that one page showed like all of the things that we are going to do it's not going to be just nine people being like yep this is what we decide like we're going to definitely involve community staff students as Dr. Ly uh, Dr. Lyman said to get all this stuff and the pros and cons list like I had already written those down but you pretty much hit all of them um, so I just think it's it's um, kind of exciting to, to like dig into this um, but I hope that we get lots of feedback I hope we like overpopulate people's mails and phone calls you know with stuff as we get to that point people love emails and surveys yeah I know I know <laughs> uh, I do too um, but I, I just I I just think we all have to be open-minded to it because I was completely like stuck in the times like this this is the way it is and then kind of open you know think outside the box a little bit and accept there are other ways to, to do things and this might be something that could really benefit our kids so that's it I'm sort of like I'm sort of like Levi I want to to me I don't have no kids in that that's the age range so it doesn't affect me but I want to make a decision about the people I Represent. So the teachers and the parents is going to make a big difference how I'm going to see this because I don't have any other up to go by for me. I have no, not against it or for it, but I'd like to hear from my people or people from the community exactly how they feel. I'd just like to say that um, I'm very grateful for the research that's been done. I'm grateful that we're making some momentum on this. Um, I've long been an advocate of this change, even since before my first term on the board. Uh, and I would just invite anyone who has, um, I don't know, concerns or misgivings, uh, you know, feel free to email me or reach out. I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody about um, my perception of the positive um, outcomes associated with this change, and I'm happy to share with you conversations I've had um, with folks from other districts um, and the, what, you know, sort of the positive impacts that they've reported to me um, after having made um, these changes. So let's, uh, let's make sure that everybody uh, is aware and, and, and everybody has an opportunity to have their um, questions uh, answered and concerns raised. Thanks. I would <clears throat> just give one more kind of example. Um, I know we have, a, as a board, have had to, uh, even just this year, we have instances where we have um, an athletic team who is done with school at 2.30, but then their actual game or match or whatever doesn't start until the other team gets here at 3.30, 4 o'clock. Mayhem sometimes occurs um, in the area, uh, <clears throat> in the vicinity of these two schools. Um, we would have less of that if the students were going and had less time in between the end of school and the start of their athletics. Um, in addition, um, I would much rather have my teenagers not home unsupervised in the early afternoon. Uh, I'd much rather have them home in the morning <laughs> uh, when they're most likely just to sleep instead of in the afternoon when they're more likely to get into trouble. So if we end a little bit later, um, we're reducing that time that our older kids are unsupervised and um, potentially not doing great things, although most of our kids do great things. so. And just a reminder of the board, you know, the, the state passing the 180 days uh, or 990, 90, uh, 900, 900 hours, you know, does give us a little more flexibility than we would have had. 
you know, prior to that, when we're adjusting and making our schedules, you know, we, we do have some flexibility so that it's another kind of like, um, <coughs> you know, I would think it's backwind to, to a potential change. I think that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> that, that concludes uh, the administration's uh, committee of the whole presentations. So thank we'll you, Ms. Dillon. Mission until the 8 p.m. Uh, planning and action meeting. <laughs>
School District Planning and Action Meeting. Roll call. Mr. Jim Bard. Here. Mr. Mike Carey. Here. Mr. Levi Kressler. Here. Mr. Darren Donovan. Here. Dr. Nathan Goats. Here. Dr. Michael Lyman. Here. Mr. Fred Scott. Here. Mr. Kurt Noggle. Mrs. Steph Eberly. Here. Mr. Arian Gaunkar. Ms. Lily Kell. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we begin our deliberations this evening, let us once again be reminded of our duty to represent all of the children of this school community, regardless of age, sex, race or creed and regardless of need or ability. This meeting is being live streamed and uploaded to the district's YouTube channel. May we now have a moment of silence to reflect on our thoughts and plans on behalf of the students of the Shippensburg Area School District. Mr. August, are there any changes to the agenda? No, ma'am. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Let's go make a motion. Uh, motion made by Mr. Bard. Is there a second? Mr. Scott, second. Second by Mr. Scott. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, moving on to citizens' comments, um, and there are none regarding agenda items. Uh, student representative report, Ms. Cow. Thank you. Um, High school happenings. Congratulations to Aryan Gonkar, who was the MVP of the State Quiz Bowl Allegheny Cup. Wow. The Leo Club is currently hosting a paper towel drive. All proceeds benefit the summer camp for blind young people. The first block with the most donations received a donut party. Movie Club and Women's Empowerment Club held a Barbie movie night on March 15th. There will be a PennDOT career field trip to PennDOT maintenance facilities in Harrisburg on April 23rd for students interested in infrastructure. On April 10th, students have the opportunity to attend the 193rd Special Operations Wing Field Trip in Middletown, PA. Trip focuses on cyber, civil engineering, aircraft maintenance, and special warfare. On March 21st, there was a focus on wellness and health career field trip for students interested in social work and healthcare. The Sashes Minithon held a Panera fundraiser on March 16th. 25% of sales using a code benefited Sashes Minithon. Last week was Cultural Heritage Week. The week celebrated Chinese culture, Egyptian culture, Haitian culture, Spanish culture, and Nepalese culture. To end the week, the students held a cultural talent show. Sashes Minithon held a pep rally on March 18th to raise awareness for the upcoming overnight party and the Mr. Minithon pageant. Sam Student Council hosted March Gladness, where teams competed against each other to raise the most money. All proceeds will go to Sashes Minithon for Four Diamonds. Sam's musical Madagascar was a hit. Three shows occurred the weekend of March 14th to 16th. PBIS hosted a fun day on March 22nd, the annual Kids vs. Teachers basketball game. The library was a quiet space for reading for those who didn't want to watch the game. That is the report. Thank you. There is no career um, tech center report. We're meeting on Thursday, board committee reports. Uh, Dr. Lineman, you got the outreach committee. Um, yeah, just really briefly. So a lot of what we talked about, we already covered in the previous meeting. Um, <clears throat> the district is also looking at um, uh, consistent branding and have uh, it's on the agenda for tonight, I think. For discussion. Yeah, for discussion um, to get our logos and uh, everything uh, around sort of our brand consistent across the district so it's professional and uh, great. <laughs> Facilities met on March 14th. Um, I know Kirk's not here and doesn't have that report. I was there. We, t we um, superintendent and, and, uh, and uh, Daryl there, and Aaron. Scott. So you can't hear me. Okay. Uh, 
Aaron took the notes. Did she give them to you uh, by any chance? Sure. Okay, we talked about uh, facilities of, of the buildings. Um, things, things that there wasn't that raw, a lot of things brought up with us, but uh, things that need to be done. I, I think a, a lot of uh, mundane maintenance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mundane, but it's, you know, unfortunately costly <laughs> um, facility uh, needs being met. Um, we we had uh, site logic there to yeah. kind of walk through and answer any questions yes. as well. Um, but most of the items that were moved forward are on the agenda for discussion. We're, um, we are we supposed to, I think you made, made reference to the bids for the stadium would be this week. So the, the bids for the stadium went out on Friday. Um, and so we have to wait till I think three weeks, I believe, um, until they come back. Uh, and then, you know, we'll have our bid opening and, you know, bring those back to the board for consideration. Okay, you said something about, at the meeting, you said something about uh, we had to cut back some things on the stadium. Do you know? uh, not necessarily. So we added, um, within the bid package, we, we put some um, the ducts and, and add alternates. Um, so we have the, the base project that the bid, uh, that the board uh, voted on. That's going out. But, but depending on how those bids come in, um, uh, K&W put some, some ways that, that should a specific area be high. Um, we, we could, the board could consider some deducts to get the cost down, depending. Um, there were also a couple additions added, um, you know, to the turf field, some additional padding to the turf field and um, an upgraded uh, scoreboard. You know, so those are add deducts that, you know, so we have the base project and when they come in, the board can choose to accept or reject any ads or, or deducts that, that are there. But even, even with the ads, Add and deducts, it may not affect us because we got three quarters of a million dollars for contingency, right? So we may not have. Uh, so that that contingency is for when construction starts. Should we find any, you know, any, any difficulties in, in, you know, re history would say we're going to find some. Um, yeah, so that that would not impact, uh, you know, outside of the entire budget in number. You know, the, those deducts could theoretically reduce the number of you know, the, the cost of the project to get it at budget, mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, again, until we know the bids, we don't really know what we have. We just build in some ability and flexibility for the board to, to you know, choose to get under budget um, should they wish to do so if it happens to be over budget uh, as well. Yeah. Can I make a motion now if I want or I gotta wait till later? Why don't, why don't we wait? Okay. Yeah, you know, get through these reports, Mr. Scott. Okay, then... Um, and the, and the scoreboard, I guess Jim talked to you about the scoreboard. So that's one of the ad alternates. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Sarah's going to be talking to that gentleman um, you know, to, to get an actual fixed price. That's not going to be part of the – that's not going to be part that's of That's going to be one of the ad alternates. Not so, part of the bid. I mean, with the, with what so they it's, it is part of the bid, but as a, as a kind of like an enhancement. Okay. So the base scoreboard is what was in that packet. Yeah. Um, you know, should the bids come back or the board – decide to to add that feature in you know that would be a, a board decision because the one we we're talking about i guess with is the book if we do the right the kind of billboard what we envision we'll be able to sell ads for it so it'd be a recurring income for years to come right that, that would be one benefit yes. for sure um you know again it's a phase yeah. project and and if that's the ultimate goal you know the, the board could choose to do it now or you know if if it fits within the budget and and there's you know uh, a consensus to do that, or, you know, it could be part of another phase, so. Okay, thank you. Mr. Scott, I would ask, like, if you're going to, um, if you do wish to make a motion, like, to use your time during, like, the board comments to add that to a discussion item, instead of, like, adding it to tonight's agenda. I, I think, that, so when you make a motion, we would add it to the next board meeting agenda as a discussion item. Okay, no, no problem. The, That's fine. Okay, thank fine. you. Uh, safety and security. Um, we met on March 21st. Uh, Dave Lindenmuth, who along with uh, Mrs. DeLong leads our safety initiatives, shared important updates regarding the Act 55 requirements and training. Uh, it is crucial to understand that the Act 55 does not replace the Act 44, which was implemented five years ago. It just adds additional layers of security measures. Mr. Lindenmuth um, has diligently been dis dis 
disseminating information to our faculty, covering topics such as situational awareness, handling emergency situations, conducting threat assessment, assessments, and more. Jippensburg remains in a strong position with our Act 55 training, uh, thanks to his efforts. There are two upcoming drills that will be happening across the district, and I learned that we receive 5% off of our workers' compensation because of these trainings, so yay for safety. Um, recognizing the significant workload, um, Dave has been working close with Leslie as a team to ensure effective management of our safety protocols. Together, they're ensuring that our faculty and staff are well prepared and informed. An upcoming event of note is the PSSI experience scheduled for June 18th, 2024. All administrators will be attending this training, which focuses on diffusing situations using a variety of scenarios. The training will further enhance our preparedness and response capabilities. And I'm delighted to announce that the installation of the impact bollards at the intermediate school, representing a significant step in our ongoing efforts to enhance physical security, these bollards not only serve as functional purposes, but also complement the aesthetics of the brick building beautifully, and our students will be planting flowers in them to add that extra touch of beauty. Was there, was there one thing we need, we need, I'd like to get clarified at the safety meeting? Dr. Stevens, uh, the, the administration says the cameras work. Maintenance says they work sometime. You know, they said you're in charge of the cameras. So, so the, the two companies were able to mesh, mesh and were straight? Yes. Okay. Moving on to the superintendent's report. Uh, thank you, Ms. Eberle. Just a, a couple uh, items uh, to, to recognize. Um, our, our school social workers were honored at Shippensburg um, uh, through their outstanding program. Uh, recognition uh, for our homes program it provides uh, uh, resources to, to homeless uh, families and, and uh, really gives them a, a leg up and, and those ladies do a, a fantastic job um, so it was great to to see them have a moment of recognition for all their hard work um, just wanted to, to also reiterate that uh, the middle school musical was was sold out it was a packed house all three nights and it, it was a, a great show and just a reminder that our very first mini-thon is happening April 5th, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to that event. It, it could be a special moment for, for a lot of kids in their high school career, and, and I will be there helping to chaperone. Uh, donation reports, um, we're, we're blessed once again to have a number of uh, uh, generous donations to our district. Uh, the RAB, R-A-B Off-Road, uh, donated $300 <coughs> to the Best Day Ever uh, program at the high school. Uh, Cindy Coldsmith Rentals, a donation of $200 for the best day ever event at Shippensburg High School. Legion number 223, monetary donation of $200 to support the best day ever. Uh, William and Janelle Lloyd, monetary donation of $200 to support the drama department. Uh, and Robert Wenick, monetary donation of $1,000 to support the Shippensburg area high school drama department. That concludes my report. Moving on to the consent agenda, we have item 4A, the approval of minutes, which are attached. 4B is the finance reports, which are attached. 4C, the policies for second reading and approval. 4D is the Lincoln Intermediate Unit Number 12 agreement for the bilingual speech evaluation. Administration recommends approval of the attached agreement with the Lincoln Intermediate for the cost of $100 per hour. Item 4E is the E-rate funding bid for the internet and phone connectivity. Administration recommends approval to accept the bid from Comcast. Um, the awarded, awarded bid will cost $4,446 per month, which is a $1,178.40 month <laughs> savings. Item 4F is the networking equipment purchased with upgrade. Administration Administration recommends approval to upgrade and purchase networking equipment from CDWG contingent on E-rate reimbursement. The attached winning bid with them um, is attached for the cost of $413,176. Uh, 4G is personnel for the professional and support staff. Uh, 
professional staff, support staff administration recommends the um, approval of the following resignations for the purpose of retirement. And I just want to take a moment to highlight these two individuals. We have Mrs. Brubaker. She is the full-time classroom assistant at the Shippensburg Area Middle School. Uh, her last day will be effective um, at the end of the 23-24 school year. Mrs. Brubaker has been with the district for 30 years. And uh, David Coons, he's the full-time utility maintenance at Shippensburg Area School District, effective April 4th, 2024. And he's been with the district for 19 years. So congratulations on to you both for your well-deserved retirement. Your contributions have made a lasting um, impact on our students and the Shippensburg community. Um, following are a number of resignations, leave of absent requests. Uh, approval of substitutes, new appointments. Is there a motion to approve items 4A through 4G? So moved. Motion made by um, Mr. Carey. Mr. Carey, I apologize. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Lyman. Discussion? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, you got something? I'll be, I'll be quick, Fred. I just wanted to second um, what uh, Mrs. Everly just said about the two retirements. I mentioned it two or three weeks ago, the last time we met, it's the time of year when you start to see these things. Um, 49 years of service from those two folks that are retiring. So like, that's, that's incredible. And it's also um, going to be really hard to fill um, because it's a lot of time and experience um, that we'll lose. But congratulations to both of them and thank you for everything you've done for us. Um, uh, the, uh, Ms. Hansen, the full-time in-school suspension classroom assistant. What? I, I know we got in-school suspension. Is she is she assist the, you know, the primary is she? She is assistant. Can you tell me which? A four is for number four, administrative, under the personnel number four. Ashley E. Hansen. Administrative recommends approval of the following. She resigning. Just wondering what the position is. So is it, that is the in-school suspension uh, monitor, Mr. Scott. She, she's not an assistant, is she? She's, is she assistant or? I want to she's tell, a classroom assistant. She's a classroom that. assistant who monitors the. So she got two functions. Just give she, she spent her time, or she spent her time in the in-school suspension room supporting those students. Oh, okay, that's what I was going to say. Assistant. I thought I thought we had full time. Okay. Can I, um, these student positions, do we? Item number 21, do they get filled? Do we get students who come and help with our grounds? And uh, I have not been around that long, oh, no. <laughs> but we, we definitely uh, uh, seek them out, and I believe, right. you know, Daryl, do we get some student help? Are you aware? Yeah, I had some student help last year. Okay, so we're looking forward to, to getting that help again. Looking for a job. <laughs> we're hiring. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Moving on to the action agenda, we have item 5A, the Greyhound Foundation donation of the hot spots. The foundation wishes to donate $20,000 in monthly increments um, of $1,500. Is there a motion to approve item 5A? Motion to approve. Motion by Dr. Lyman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Carey. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 5B, we have the grant approval. Sue Fink, the executive director of the Found Greyhound Foundation, is seeking approval to apply for and accept a $150,000 innovation grant from Exerate, a large funding profit working across the country to find solutions to close the learning gap. <coughs> the funds will be used to pay were the cost of two to four high impact math tutors for our tier two students. We would provide services for approximately 50 students a day, which is a typical tier two amount at the intermediate school. Is there a motion to approve item 5B? Who to approve? Second. Motion by um, Mr. Bard, second by Dr. Goats. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 5C is the SAMS Yes MOU. The Shippensburg Middle School requests approval of the attached MOU with Junior Achievements to provide the Say Yes program. 
um, and it is free of charge to the district. Is there a motion to approve item 5C? Ms. Scott, make a motion. Approve. Motion by Mr. Scott. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Goats. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 5D is the Capital Area Intermediate Unit General Operating Budget for the 24-25 school year. Administration is recommending the budget. A copy of the proposed budget um, along with the resolution is attached. This um, the general budget for the 24-25 school year, um, $8 million, a little over $8 million. This represents an increase of $570,000 or 7.6% from the approved budget of the 23-24 school year. Is there a motion to approve item 5D? So moved. Motion by Dr. Goats. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. Lyman. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 5E is the Shippensburg Area Middle School 7th grade field trip to the Conakajig Institute in Mercersburg, PA. Administration recommends approval for the middle school to take the entire 7th grade to the Institute in Mercersburg to learn about colonial life on the frontier. The trip supports the seventh grade social studies curriculum and will be funded by the middle school PTO budget. Is there a motion to approve item 5E? So move. Motion by Mr. Carey, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Scott. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> 5F is the sports physical expenses. Administration recommends approval to remove the $10 per student fee that students are charged for physicals in June. The cost will be covered by the school district's unassigned fund balance. Is there a motion to approve item 5F? Please so go ahead and make a motion. Uh, motion by Dr. Lyman, second by Fred Scott. Discussion? Hallelujah. <laughs> Just a quick question. Um, the proposal is to come out of fund balance this time and then to work it into the operating budget in the pre next years? That, that would be the plan. Uh, we think it's about a $1,200 um, cost to the district. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 5G is the Newburgh Borough Council Volunteer Crossing Guard. Administration recommends approval for the Newburgh Borough Council to seek crossing guard volunteers for the Borough of Newburgh. Due to ongoing safety concerns and parent complaints, the crossing guards will be strictly on a volunteer basis and will require no pay from the borough or school district. And the Borough of Newburgh would handle all clearance requirements, training requirements, and as well uh, furnish a uniform. Newburgh Borough would also forward clearance information to the district to keep on file for our for all volunteer crossing guards. Is there a motion to approve item 5G? So moved. Scott, go ahead. Go ahead. Motion by Dr. Lyman. Second, second by Mr. Scott. Discussion. So I just thank you to Newburgh Borough. This seems like a nice item of collaboration, and but it seems like they're pulling a lot of the weight, but it's, this is a very good thing. Yeah, I agree. I just, why do we have to approve something that's free that a borough is doing on their own? Is that? Because there are some volunteer requirements because they will be around children. So okay. we would have to just, and it's kind of, they're also on school district property, um, okay. and guiding children across the street, just also so that we know. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 5H is the future, future maintenance building inclusion of, in the high school, middle school land development plan. Administration recommends adding the inclusion of the new maintenance building to the high school, middle school projects land development plan. If approved, this would allow for a five-year window for the structure to be built. The fee to include the footprint and coordination of the future maintenance building within the current high school, middle school land development plan is $9,500. This includes adding the maintenance building to the land development plan, but does not include the actual design of the maintenance building. Is there a motion to approve item 5H? So moved. Second. By Dr. Goats. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Scott. Discussion. So since there won't be a full 
I guess, like a schematic of the facility. We're just kind of estimating the square footage. We, we are. This this is to, to get borough approval. And designating um, a specific location. Right, right. including and Is it, that location like where the barn is presently, or are we I, I believe that's about someplace else? I believe that's the intention is to, to kind of keep it in that general area. Okay. And is this... Is this a uh, recommendation that came from facilities? Is that it, that it came from K and W? Um, you know, they they kind of uh, gave me a heads up that if if we're considering this, we want to do this now. Okay. Um, as opposed to to do it later and, and possibly pay more. Okay. Do do we have some sense of how much this building would cost when we eventually build it? Uh, Daryl, Daryl, can you speak to that a little bit, please? Daryl gave uh, some estimates at the facility committee. They, they were several different estimates. Um, most are in the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar range. That does not include electric, plumbing, heating, or anything of that nature to the building. Um, the one estimate that did come in included all was near six hundred and twenty-five thousand for the building complete. And we're looking at a sixty by a hundred. Um, building 14 feet high okay oh, um, great thank you so the five-year window then would start when I guess this summer when the once once once, once the approvals happen it's approved by the borough and everything of that it's yeah. land and from there I think there's there's just a, a relatively small fee to extended I believe is what I well, that, that was my next question so if we needed to extend beyond the five years that is possible right it's, that is my understanding it's just additional sort of bureaucratic hurdle that needs to be overcome right okay right uh, if you let it if you let it furlough and you do not renew it that's whenever it you have to go back to ground zero and start all over again so we set our outlook calendars just to make sure that we don't forget <laughs> right, right. right. Gotcha. And uh, Darrell, remind remind uh, the board. I think the facility committee asked you to, to try to get a steel, some estimates on around steel buildings. A steel building as well. Yeah, Kirk asked to get pricing on a steel structure of the same size and everything. So need to be. I'm working at trying to get some uh, quotes in on that, just so we have a comparison of what it would be from wood structure, and steel outside to a complete all steel building. Yeah, I guess my one concern here is just that, and and I'm not opposed to this, but I just, if we don't know exactly what the building would look like yet, um, I guess we're estimating what the footprint might be, and maybe we have to like change that later on based on what we actually build. I assume that that's not terribly complicated to like amend, you know, with the borough, uh, our um, the land development plan. If if we need to amend slightly the footprint from what we had originally approved, that I really don't. I, I'm not going to say yes or no on that. Okay, Bill, do you um, know? <laughs> you can shrink it down. Because of that, I, I, I don't. I don't down. foresee. Really, the footprint getting much larger than it is um, because of what we have right now as far as what we're putting in that building uh, for the trucks and everything to get them out of the weather and stuff. Uh, it's not going to replace the barn that is there. God. This is in addition to. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. So um, the barn would still be utilized more for like what unfortunately it gets used for now, storage and everything of that nature with that for sales and stuff. Um, so that whenever stuff is put in there, we can still get our equipment out when we need it. And it's not sitting outside in the weather and stuff all the time. So. This building also would give you the option of, of ordering like toilet paper, paper towels. Right, gross. It, would have, it would actually have, we can be storing our custodial supplies and stuff of that nature in there instead of utilizing it, like at the admin building and stuff of that, well, operations building now. Um, all that stuff can be moved there. I have filters stored at multiple places because I don't have room to store it at the operations building, so I have to store it 
everywhere all over the place and then you have to go around all the different schools, take inventory of all this stuff instead of having it at one centralized location. So it's stuff like that that we're going to try to utilize into this particular structure, and along with having a uh, restroom and everything at that building because there is nothing at the barn right now. It's a pot. So that's what we have there, and there's no heat except for a salamander. So, and, and I'm confident that we could make minor adjustments to the plan through a process with the borough. Yeah, I just, I just guess I wanted to say, like, I, I think this is a smart move. This, this is good, like, sort of pre-planning. I just wanted to anticipate any um, potential, I don't know, contingencies that might arise, and 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 it sounds like those would be reasonably mitigated. So, yay. Just one question. This is like way down the road. Well, hopefully within five years, I guess. But we use some some of our students to do some like work per se. We sure did on the, ad, the admin building that we purchased last year. So is this? And that was a little different. That building was already built. It was like taking carpet out and doing things of that nature. But is there is there opportunities possibly for our student like Votech kids in particularly to get I, some hands-on experience with this? I think with a long enough runway and mm -hmm. communication with the Career Tech Center, you know, I, I can't speak for them, but this would certainly be a pretty win-win situation yeah. um, you know, for both I mean, institutions. I, we've talked about it before. Some other surrounding districts like like have kids like build houses as like a project for a year. So like I just my mind goes to that and think like what better opportunity for kids to do something to impact us for years and years down the line. So I I hear what you're saying. But there's no way on earth that we can let these men work out in these conditions for any much longer. It's ridiculous. We've all been up there and say it's bad. And we're not going to do anything to make it better. They've gone through another winter, no heat, no bathroom facilities, nowhere to wash their hands stepped outside, and we're dilly-dallying over them. Time, five years? Doesn't make any sense. We, we have to have a starting point. Like, we can't just say that we're it's not it currently in the plan to do it next year or even with the high school, middle school plan. But, I mean, prior to it being on the agenda tonight, it was not even on the radar for any formal action. We didn't discuss it last month. That's why we did this month, to get him, get him get the bids. We didn't discuss it then. But it's just now, it was on the discussion agenda the last time, so there was a process for a board to agree to get it on discussion and then to to approve it. So, so for, to, sorry to interrupt. I think the, the next step in the process, Fred, I think is, you know, to, for us through the facilities committee to get additional quotes and then bring that forward. That's so, fine. That's fine. But the f I mean, I think there, there's a process in, in, in place and, and this is this gets us a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, that we don't have to file, a, a, you know, like well, I, we, I we're no checking problem. a box that, that gets us out of the gate, you know, whether it's the will of the board to, do, you know, what, what the timeline is for that, um, I think probably should come through the facilities committee and, and recommendations and quotes that Daryl gets for, for that group to bring forward, you know, to, to the full board. Yeah. Okay? Well, okay. I understand you got to start somewhere, but the ending, I want the ending closer than longer. That is all of our wish. Like we. Uh. Uh, so there is a motion and a second for item 5H. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? <coughs> item 5A is the K&W scope of work agreement for the Shippensburg Middle School and the high school improvements. Administration recommends approval of the revised scope of work agreement with K&W engineers. The scope of work included in the stadium is generally described in K&W's engineers additional services authorization dated November 29th, 2023 and revised on February 28th, 2024. That is attached. Is there a motion to approve item 5I? Motion to approve. Motion made by Dr. Lyman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kressler. Discussion? What is it? So uh, with the scope of the project um, and some additional conditions put on by the borough, we have to do some more, uh, KW has to do some engineering work. For the one they approved, we gotta do some more work for what they approved? Yeah, so, so from the original scope of the work that KW put in, this 
you know, it's been tweaked through the borough approval process um, and, and the budget that, that we've approved. So they've, they've got to do some additional work to satisfy those requirements, Fred. You know what the cost of yeah. it is. What the is the cost? I, I can't read this thing. I didn't. I didn't have it. Hard to read. Print out. It says at the end, we propose to complete the work described above for a lump sum of $23,445 and no cents. I don't know if that's in addition to or if that's like the total. This is a revised version, right? So this is is not in addition to that is just a revised number from whatever was given to us in November uh, I believe so we we sent out bids for things right. on the boroughs on a boroughs agreement correct and then I you, I, I, oh, so we sent out bids for this product on what they told us and what the borough told us correct Cor correct so what are we paying twenty three thousand dollars for now I know you keep you say the borough, and I I sort of understand, but I don't fully understand. Sure. So so this is just modifying that agreement that we're already paying them to to do the work that is a part of that project. So but backing up. So on the stadium project, mm -hmm. the the conditions that the borough put on aren't for that project. Okay. So they said sidewalks. They said. Um, some additional, uh, you know, impervious or pervious drink, you know, stormwater work. Okay, so that's not on this project with the stadium, but in order to move forward with the high school, the, there is that work will be attached to that. Okay, so that that wasn't originally in the scope because we didn't know what the requirements were going to be. So we now know, and, and in order to move forward with that project, KNW has to do some some engineering design work um, to meet those requirements. But that's for the stadium for the high school? So, so it's for the high school project. So, so we're, we're gonna be moving forward on the high school project. You know, we already are, we're out to bid, okay? In order to get the bids out for the high school, middle school project, we have to go through this process. It got tweaked a little bit. k and has to do the work to allow us to get that bid process completed. Is this part of where that sidewalk came in? I, I, yeah, I believe that's part of that. Is that sidewalk coming into this because of the parent loop? Uh, not to my knowledge, Mr. Bard. It was, uh, I think it's a part of what the borough, um, it, they, they, that was their requirement. They wanted sidewalks up Everly and down. I, I understand what they want, but it just went along for all these years and nobody ever said anything about a sidewalk. And, you know, and it seemed like it was now, it just seems like when, I mean, the building we're talking about is going out back, and it just seems to me that, like, this parent loop is triggering this whole sidewalk thing. I, I, I didn't get that sense when I was at the meetings, Mr. Bard. I think it was, they were looking at the totality of the, the, the projects. The, the loop may be a part of that. I definitely think that's a factor in it, um, but I also think... <laughs> The, the the athletic stadium uh, is also a factor when it comes to parking and where where people are walking. So I, I think it's a number of different issues there's combining. No, there's no parking out there right now, correct? <laughs> correct. I don't know. I just I, I just don't quite understand the sidewalk bill going to nowhere. But uh, I I can't say I don't uh, agree with you on that. Uh, but in order to get those approvals to move forward, we we have to. Uh, abide by their, their okay. conditions. God. You know, that's how you can tell if you live in the borough is if there's a sidewalk in front of your house. <laughs> they like borough, they like sidewalks, I guess. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Roll call, please. Mr. Jim Bard. Yeah. Mr. Mike Carey. No. Mr. Levi Kressler. Yes. Mr. Darren Donovan. Yes. Dr. Nathan Goats. Yes. Dr. Michael Lyman. Yes. Mr. Fred Scott. No. Mrs. Steph Aberly. 
Yes. Motion carried, six yes, two no. Moving on to the discussion agenda, item 6A, exchange student per board policy 239, an exchange student from Spain has met all of the qualifications to attend Shippensburg High School for the 24-25 school year. Administration recommends approval of that student. This student from Spain replaces the exchange student from Chile for the 24-25 school year that the board approved on January 8th, 2024. Steph, can I stop you real quick? Because I know that I this know is... The question <laughs> I, I, I know I've said this like a thousand times, but it actually, Ms. When, when Ms. Kell was here tonight, she actually mentioned like last week was Cultural Awareness Week, which also then goes into this where I think it's so awesome. And then at the end of the school year, these foreign exchange students come and they present us with these flags and then like we don't have them hanging anywhere yet. And I think it'd be so cool if we could just find a spot in our high school to hang these things. Um, in my mind, the auditorium seems to be a perfect place because I think they did a program or something with Cultural Awareness Week in the auditorium with the students here. Or right there along that ridge that or along this side awesome of the Awesome too. Anywhere where there's lots of, of eyes that see these things. Um, so I just, again, ask that we can find some sort of place to hang these flags because we've got to have like 15 of them or so by now, it feels like. so. It, it continues to be a work in progress, <laughs> Mr. Cressa. We, we will get to it. Thank you. Um, so when it says replaces, do we just do we have a certain number of slots for? So so, so we do, um, and you know, uh, exchange students are awesome. We love having them. They do come with you know some some back end work. Um, so we try not to overload our, our counselors. Um, so we try to you know kind of have a, a set number that we accept every year. Item six B is the expulsion waiver. Um, parent of the student did waive their rights to a formal student hearing. Um, administration recommends that that student be placed in the Kaola program. 6C is the senior class trip. Administration recommends approval for the class of 24 to take their senior class trip on Friday, May 17th to the Pittsburgh Zoo. Transportation will be coordinated through the transportation office. 6D is the G Blues summer camp. Administration recommends the approval of the following camps below. Um, you guys want me to read that information? Do you just me to keep going? Very good. Going. Good. Keep going. Okay. Item 6E, um, commencement date and location for the class of 2024. I don't know about you, but I've been asked when's graduation. Administration recommends approval for the class of 2024 commencement ceremony to be held May 30th, 2024 at 7 p.m. at the Lores Center on the Shippensburg University campus. 6F is the grant approval. Um, uh, Ms. Bolts will apply for $5,000 if awarded um, to purchase small gas engines for the agriculture department. 6G is the robotics grant. Um, Mrs. Fowler, who you've all met this evening, is seeking <coughs> to approve, to, seeking approval to apply for and accept a grant for approximately $4,600 from the Greater Chambersburg Chamber Foundation. If awarded, the funds will be used to purchase robots for the robotics course in the at the high school to replace obsolete technology. The MOU in service administration recommends approval of the attached MOU between the school district and the um, Shippensburg Area Education Association regarding the in service incentive program. 6I, the Shippensburg School District SEA MOU Lego League. Administration recommends the approval of the attached um, MOU. 6J, the district branding, the outreach committee and administration recommends approval of the attached proposal for the district branding. 6K, the power school quote, administration recommends um, renewing the contracts with power school for Schoology at a cost of, uh, it's used by our secondary students at the cost of $12,236. Um, the 6L, the summer technology purchases. Um, there is there are a list of those the 50 interactive panels the 325 Chromebooks um, you can see those attached there um, Dr. Stevens the current interactive panels do we have those 50 or are these new or are they replacements? Those will be replacements. Those will be replacing older uh, devices. 
to how old are our interactive panels and to like maybe Dr. Donat can share like at what capacity are the teachers using <coughs> the interactive panels? So th these are like the whiteboard, like the smart boards. Correct. And right now, you know, we're the ones that are effective, you know, positioning on the teachers. Now, we have them prioritized by the teacher's request, the ones that are having issues. So these are the teachers that use them, that you know, are asked to be, that have to throw our priority list in place. Um, some, of the, some of the boards are original to the intermediate school, to give an idea on the age. And some, you know, we've had some defective ones that are you know, not quite that. So, like, these smart boards, they're capable of a lot. Like, are our teachers uti utilizing them to, like, they use like we're talking about like our SEL students. Are they like able to utilize like Google um, Translate to help those students who English is their second language to help in the classrooms? Are they like to that capacity being used? I, I don't know if they're being used for that capacity. The newer boards have Google built into them, so they allow more features like that. They, they can run the Google apps. So are the are they using that feature? Um, We've got very few that have that capability right now. Just the ones that last year are going to start are starting to have that capability. The older ones don't have that built into the board. So when we're replacing these, can we look at where like our highest need is? Like I know like some of the elementary schools have a higher population or a need. Can we look to see like do they have that capability and are our teachers trained like to use that feature? I wouldn't see any reason why we couldn't explore that. Another question that I had asked that they had answered prior that maybe you all were wondering as well. So the 325 student Chromebooks and cases, those are for the sixth grade students, and those are should be able to be used until their senior year. Correct. Right. to 12th grade. Theoretically. Theoretically. I know that's not true for my kid. <laughs> um, 6M, the summer food program and staffing. The food service department would like to continue offering the summer feeding program. Um, the operation of the program is also contingent on approval of the awarded request for proposal, signed contract, and approval. Um, the application by the state no later than May 15th. Um, during the budget, you may also remember like there were some uh, staffing requests as well. That is also in that proposed 6M. 6N is the No Kids Hungry grant. The Shippensburg Food Service Department is requesting to apply for and accept a summer meals grant through the No Kids Hungry in the amount of $21,243 awarded. It would be to purchase the two Oliver food package mach machines um, that would help provide like the bundled weekend meals. 6O, the Primo Edge food service software at a cost of Total cost of $8,535. 6P is the food service equipment purchase request. Administration is recommending a new washer, and that cost is $13,960. 6Q is the food service management company recommendation. The deadline for the district to receive food service management bids is 11.30 a.m. on March 26th, the company's attended the mandatory pre-bid meeting for these services, as well as the Nutrition Group and the METS Corporation. A committee will meet on March 27th and April 5th. 6R is the water heater replacement at the middle school. Um, this is a recommendation from facilities. Um, that cost is $52,900. 6S, electrical infrared inspection. The energized cleaning facilities Committee recommends approval for the GR Sponagle to do the infrared inspection at the schools at a cost of $18,097. I got some questions on that. While we're there. Sure. Daryl. Now, I'm not against this as a safety precaution, if that's what it takes. But this is not a PA code, correct? Federal. The federal code, federal does not do inspections. From what I understand, Pennsylvania has not adopted that federal code to be used in Pennsylvania, period, across Pennsylvania completely. That's correct, Mr. Bard. It's not a code, but a highly recommended practice at this point from our 
um, from SiteLogic. Uh, so my question is, who's pushing the issue to get this done? Who told you that we needed this done? It was brought to Chad initially through Lear. Through Weir? Lear, whenever Lear, they were going to school. Which is a company that does school. this? It's a company that does, does it along this. with Spinagle. Uh, Spinagle had done our infrareds before, whenever we had the switchgear explosion, um, this wing of the building. Okay, so. And then at that point, National Electrical Code and FB, NFBA 70 was uh, at that point up until September 23rd of this Correct. past year. That's it never. was just a suggestion. Pennsylvania that never done. adopted that. So you're telling me that National Electrical Code, which is basically underneath this entire thing here, um, you don't have to ground pools if it wasn't adopted by Pennsylvania. Correct. Pennsylvania never adopted it, so it's not a, it's not a code in Pennsylvania. Is it a Daryl, did you say we had a problem with the switchgear? We had a, we had our switchgear blow up back in 2017. And is this is this the process that would allow us to detect that early? Yes. Okay. I guess the other question is, why is this not in the asset protection? With the, you know, everybody doing the asset protection and, and, and they are doing all that stuff with that, how come that was not in, involved in that? The code, came, the, the code just came out in 2023? I'm taking it. I've, I've included it. I've taken it and I've included this into my... Um, into my budget for the 2024, 2025, as far as service agreements and everything of that nature, getting more, getting a couple other quotes and stuff in from different now, places. The Lear company, from what I understand, they're, they're, they're looking at all this stuff and they're, lo they're gonna clean it and do whatever, they're, they're doing a, what they call it, uh, the- de energized de energizing. cleaning. That's where they go through and they clean the dust off of all the, um, Bars and everything in the switch gear, clean that all up, clean up this actual main rows and everything. Right. That all gets cleaned That's up. That's the $8,000. Go through and torque, make sure everything's torqued and everything. Nothing's and they fix that. Up. If, it, if a lug come loose, they tighten that lug they tighten up. tighten that it's up. It's all in that $8,000. It's all in that $8,000. The $18,000, the infrared, is going to just tell you a hot spot here or there. It's going to, that'll be the report and everything that goes with that. And then if they find something and they will detail that within the report and then give a price of what it would be for them to replace it or what we could replace. Some of this, have, some stuff would have to be done. If they found From it within I'm the main switch gear would have to be de-energized. In the attachments that you had in there, the, the, the de-energized, they're looking for any arcs or anything also when they're, they're in them panels, they're taking the panels apart. Like I said, I'm not against it. Just $26,000 is a lot of money. And it's not even a PA code. You know, if that's what everybody, and this is just discussion. So if that's what everybody wants. We haven't had, an, we, haven't, it's, we haven't had an IR inspection since 2018, whenever they went through and they started to do all of the arc flash ratings and stuff on all of our panels. But if it was just passed in 2023, at back then you didn't even have to do it legally. No, you didn't have to. But to do the um, arc flash, you needed to do some of the IR, and the IR actually helped us locate a couple things that was a problem that we would not have known ahead of time. So this is something again. It should, to me, I, maybe I'm wrong, but should, I think should have been in the asset protection when. When Site Logic was looking at this stuff, and they're going to start doing whatever they're doing, I, I mean, it's, that's just my my thought. But so that's fine. Asset but it's still that's asset course, protection. So like maintenance, um, upkeep uh, versus it doesn't include inspections. 
I mean, they're not saying that anything necessarily needs replaced. It's more so we had a situation where something kind of blew up, and this is kind of to ensure that this everything is good so that we can still keep the kids in school and to do what we do by providing well, them an kind education. Of maintenance. It happened in 20, 2017. You said the thing happened in 2017? 2017? I think it's 2017 is when it happened. Well, why is it coming up now? I mean, for me, I just have a... Why it is coming up now is because it was brought to my attention through Chad and everything yeah. that this was passed in September 23rd, 2023, that it is now mandatory to have this done to any commercial building, industrial plant, industrial and institutional commercial buildings and large multifamily residential complexes to prevent equipment failures and workers' injuries. There's also non-compliancy to this thing can cost you up to $50,000. Federally. But, I'm, but, the, but the, the company that's going to do the work suggested the work, correct? One of them, yes. One of them, so it's, it's to his advantage to have us do this work so he can, he can get, uh, collect money for it. Is that, am I wrong? No, 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 you're not wrong. Yeah, they're gonna suggest that, uh, that they can do the, the work and everything. Daryl, I do appreciate you showing up and kind of keeping this on your radar and making sure that we are informed um, of to do it and then the repercussions of not doing it. I mean, to pay the 18,000 or equivalent plus maybe the eight thousand plus possibly a fine of fifty thousand or you would never want like our buildings to catch on fire or someone to be injured or our employees um, i'm not saying not do it i just i'm just wondering who was pushing to get it done and i thought it should be under asset protection that's a maintenance thing that we're already paying k and w or whoever's doing it that's like logic to do it that's all so Jim, are you concerned that we're somehow being taken advantage of with this? Is what? That, are you concerned that we're being taken advantage of somehow by this or some? Is, well, is that? I, I, to me, this is a maintenance thing, and, and I don't know why it wouldn't have been. I mean, that's what we're doing, a maintenance, to so it don't catch on fire. I agree. But asset protection is not a maintenance thing. That's what, that's what we're kind of doing. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. It's got to come up for a boat, so. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Daryl. Yep. Thanks, Daryl. You're welcome. Um, next is door, door replacement of door number 15. That's the door down there by the gym uh, to be replaced. $14,699. Be paid out of the capital reserve fund. 6U, the revised invitation to bid for the paving of the parking lot at the admin building and other parking lot repairs at James Bird and Nancy Grayson. And that is it on the discussion agenda, just A through U. Um, next up is the citizens' comments regarding non-agenda items. There is one. Just please identify your, yourself. Um, and address all comments to the board as a whole and make sure they are in the form of a statement. Ms. Wolfinger. Hello, board members. Um, as many of you know, uh, Terry and I have been working on a project in the Cumberland County areas focusing on mental health for kids K through 12. Um, we want to take a, take a second to thank the administration, specifically Mr. August, um, Ms. Thema and also Mrs. DeLong um, for your continued help, you know, in this project. We also want to thank the, the school board members, the amazing uh, district employees that we've had conversations with, and the community members and parents that we've had also lots and lots of conversations with on this topic. The, uh, the district has been a great partner, and I know in my heart that this topic is a priority for our school district. With speaking to many parents and community members, it has been made very obvious that there are a lot of categories that we all define mental health through. The lens can be different for each person who wears it. But we have found in our research that the biggest concerns so far have to do with bullying, depression and anxiety, addiction, eating disorders, and shelter and food insecurity. As we are working towards the end of this project, I'm happy to report to the community that I believe our district does a fabulous job in almost all these areas. And we have found that there are so many resources available to help our families and the students of our district. 
Um, would the district like to do more? Obviously, I think we would all agree they would love to do more. But it always, it always is going to come down to the funding from the state, which is where we, education voters, comes in to teach people how to help our community and our school district advocate for our students and for our district as a whole. Um, so I want to invite everyone this Thursday night, March 28th from 7 to 8 o'clock. Uh, we want to invite you to the Community Center in Cleversburg um, to come check out the many resources that are used by the district and others that you may not know about within our community um, to, that help support families and mental health for all of our students. Thank you, Mrs. Wolfinger. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Dwayne Mowry. I'm a resident of Hopewell Township. Uh, some of you hail from that area as well. Uh, I'd first of all, I'd like to thank you, you as the board for your commitment uh, and your investment in time that you make here. Um, and all of you should have received an email from me in late January raising concerns about the rate of property tax increase over the past 10 years and the projections of revenue needed if that rate of increase continues for the next 10 years. Uh, several, several of you were kind enough to respond to me. Uh, I do very much appreciate that. Uh, one of the members replied that we share your concern about the long-term sustainability of the budget. Uh, and I appreciate that. I'm here because while I would like to think that's true, I'm not yet convinced. Uh, based on what I can gather from various sources of information, newspapers, school board videos, school board minutes, cursory budget uh, documents, it appears that the cost to build a proposed stadium on school-owned property will exceed the cost of upgrading Memorial Park by over $2 million. Uh, I heard $26,000 was a lot of money earlier in the presentation here. Uh, $2 million is a lot more than $26,000. Sadly, there is much confusion about this, not only on the part of the taxpayers, but within the board itself. Uh, in viewing the last board meeting minutes, uh, I saw uh, questions raised. I saw them this evening. Uh, about actions that are being uh, you know, undertaken. Um, you know, these, the confusion is regarding actual costs, the specific work to be done, and what usage will even be allowed at the proposed stadium. I have to wonder whether the board has given clear direction to the administration, whether the administration understands the direction of the board, and even whether the administration has misrepresented or misinterpreted the wishes of the board, leading to some of this confusion. Adding to the confusion about costs and usage is the question of funding for amenities such as lights, bathrooms, and concession stands, which I understand are not included in the current design. In spite of us already spending $380,000 on the design, we're also going to need additional dollars to redesign to add these amenities. So it appears to me. Uh, again, the confusion, uh, information that may not be clear uh, may play into some misunderstanding on my part. Claims have been made that this $2 million, the, the difference in, in what I perceive to be the cost of building a new stadium versus upgrading Memorial Park, that this $2 million will not increase taxes. Perhaps that's true from a very short-sighted perspective. It may not have an impact this year because it has been budgeted. However, an expenditure of $2 million today will cause $2 million to be unavailable tomorrow unless taxes are increased. Please also bear in mind that the negotiating thugs from the teachers union are keenly aware of the value that the board places on tax dollars. And when they see that money doesn't appear to be a deterrent to the funding of a discretionary project, they will demand even more concessions from the district for non-discretionary services. I'd like to think that the district wouldn't concede to the union to avoid the community being held hostage. I'm afraid they will, and that would simply assure that increased taxation of an already overburdened taxpayer base will, will continue at the maximum rate allowed by law. In addition to consuming unnecessary taxpayer dollars, building a stadium on land owned by the school will consume a finite resource that will desperately be needed for expansion as a result of significant growth in the student population. As we speak, our elementary schools are bursting at the seams, and this growth will pervade the entire range of grades over time. I suggest that we're planning to spend dollars that we don't have in pursuit of a project that we don't need in an effort to have a beautiful sports facility at the expense of learning facilities and curriculum for a rapidly expanding school district. By the way, if the cost to upgrade Memorial Park were $2 million more than building a stadium on school-owned property, 
I would be campaigning to build the stadium. Please understand that. This is dollars. It's not location. For me, this is, you know, it's all about the impact to the taxpayer. That 40% tax increase that I mentioned in the email that I sent to you all that we've seen over the past 10 years may pale in comparison to the increase that we'll see for the next 10 years without constraint and wisdom on the part of you, the board. One of my favorite uh, leaders in history, Winston Churchill, famously remarked that Mr. Mallory, occasionally... Your, your three minutes are up, sir. Okay. I finished my quote. Sure. Occasionally he stumbled over the truth, but he's always picked himself up and hurried on as if nothing happened. I simply hope that we won't pick ourselves up and hurry on as if nothing happened once we know the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mowry. Moving on to board comments. Mr. Donovan? I have none tonight. Mr. Dr. Lyman? Um, <clears throat> just, uh, I would encourage, if you didn't see the, I'm excited about the district uh, branding. Uh, if you didn't look at the attachments, I think we have a really good company. I'm looking forward to us having better logos and just sort of a better image that we put out there that's consistent. I think that's an exciting thing. Um, that's it. Mr. Scott? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I'd like to, us to move forward on what we think about the stadium for the future. We're talking about the lights and the buildings that are required. We got 5.1 million set aside, right, for the bill, for the land. I'm sorry, the, the I can't hear We you. got 5.1 million set aside for the stadium up here, right? We're close to that. Are you able to, to detail that a little bit? Um, so, in terms of bond borrow, mm -hmm. um, there is, I think, 5.6 um, designated for the stadium. 500 is um, uh, soft money, right? So, so, so it's the borrow. Yeah. Are, the are bond. you asking about the actual money, balance? Actual money for the stadium. 500,000 going to the... Uh, 5.1 5, 5. for the construction That's and right. half a million for, like, soft costs for a total of 5.6 million set aside yes. in bond borrowings so it's five point that's straight up 5.1 if we no matter when we do it we're gonna have the determination of what we want from my understanding we're all we neg neg all what we need now is the lights field house and session and bathrooms am i right Those well, the, i mean that would be a complete almost a complete stadium um yes. you know but well, we're going to have to get I mean, what the different. goal is, Mr. Scott, if it's to play varsity football eventually, we would need borough approval, a traffic study, and at least lights. But, but varsity football is everybody, including myself, is what we look at. What about the soccer teams? What about the field hockey teams? What, if we can't play, they still have the right to be playing on a decent field right now. So I think the whole sports thing should be in encompassed lights at that at that field even if we can't which i don't believe i can believe we, we can get the people in the community will step forward and, and give us the money we need for it. but even without that it gives us next an extra practice field the kids can practice soccer they can practice football no, they practice football even though they can't play they can practice there they got give us a, a, another place to for the kids to come out evenings to have events so i would like us to a pro, come up with a plan, K and W come up with a plan, submit it to the borough, and see what it would cost to do those four things. Because that's only four things I know we're lacking, right? Am I right? Those four things: the, the, the lights, the field house, the uh, bathrooms, and the concessions there. Three of the other things we already know we're going to have to get donations for. So that's not going to be added to it. So no matter when we do it, it's done. We know we, this is what we got, and I can go to that person and say, we'd like you to donate to a field house. We'd like you to donate to a bathroom. Over the years, people have distrust of us, the board, not just us, but the board, because we say things and never accomplish things. So I'd like to make a motion that we get K and W to finish out those four products and take it to the borough, or how we, however we're going to do it. Are you referring to a design? I guess it's not, because I, I, so much befuddles me. I have a design from my, 
Uh, where I thought you were going with that when you yeah. were saying about the other um, yeah, I have the other sports, I thought that you were referring to like maybe just the lights. That way, fans could have their summer camps there. Um, field hockey could still play and soccer. Not necessarily the cost associated with all of that. When we had this conversation earlier um, at the last board meeting, we know what roughly it's going to cost. Yes. But we already know a cost. Do we? We know what the lights are roughly like eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. Yes. I would say minimum eight hundred thousand dollars. Fifty. Yes. And but every time I hear, we don't have enough money. We don't have enough money. We don't. We don't have the budget. We still have that one point seven in the balance. balance. We have that sitting there. Designated to the stadium that prior boards had. But we know that those three. Those three. I believe. Like I said. Maybe I'm, I'm talking to people, but I'm getting, I'm getting frustrated with people walking up to me. Fred, you guys are putting in a stadium and not letting football play? I mean, if you go out in the community, I hear it all the time. I go, I like say it, parents are putting people, what are you guys doing? So all I'm asking is we make a bid to, to make the plan forward, take it to the borough, get approval or non-approval, and we adjust to that. Well, I think, I think what he's saying, we got the plan from 2021. So just take that to the borough and see if we could, if they let us put the lights up and, and what we need to, to put the concession stands, what they're expecting out of us, the, the bathrooms, so we know where we stand. Can they, can they do that without a full design? Um, my understanding, having lived one design process, would, is that we'd have to go through a, a full design. full design process. Why, why the part that they approved, we wouldn't have to do that again, would we? Fred, I'm sorry, it's really hard the, to hear. Uh, the part we've already got approved, we wouldn't have to do that again. No, that, I mean, that part's in the pipeline. Um, but, but in order to do what you're suggesting, we would have to do a secondary, second phase uh, process that it mirrors this, the one we just got through. We're going to have to do it anyway, sooner or later, correct? We, I, we still did not get through. We didn't even get a shovel in the ground for the first part of the phase. Yeah, but, but I, I understand that. I was, and at first, I was willing to wait till we got the first shovel. But then, how much time? We were supposed to have this thing started in March. Now, and then it was moved to April. Now it's to May. When we do get it started, then we're going to start this process. Then the, what, how long will it be for that? So, Fred, are you making a, like, what is your motion, Fred, so I can... My motion is that we get the design they want, that we need, and take it to the borough and see what they, if they'll approve it or not. We're all for those things? Yes, four things. Well, there's nothing, nothing else that I know of. I'll, uh, we'll get that on uh, as a discussion at the next board meeting. Okay. Well, I agree with the light deal there. I mean, I think that would be awesome. They could use the lights. You had to do a whole design for the lights too. I don't. I don't believe so. Like, I, I don't believe that you need a full design just to erect lights. I, I, not an engineer. I, I think that light would probably be the the easiest thing to put in. You yeah, know, we're we're that. we're already geared up for that in this project. Um, yeah, I think for that it would be the cost associated with it, and getting the borough approval. Um, you know, which. The parking study, the traffic study would have to happen. But um, I thought and that was just for varsity football, football. the traffic study, not necessarily the other. So I mean, that that would be a question we could we could ask the borough. You know, are you willing to let us put lights in? But we still agree not to play varsity football there. Um, you know, I, I don't know the mechanism of I, how I, that works. I understand. I I just like some clarification. I think the community would like some clarification, one way or the other. What what the, what the borough requires and what the borough not. Going. I don't want to wait till we're ready to build. Then we gotta go to the borough to find out what we want to build, what we can build. So, Fred, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, a motion or a discussion item for uh, K and W to move forward with design on lights, field house, bathrooms, and concessions. But if, if that just but, as a point of order, I I think that the motion needs to be made, and then we need to actually see if the board is uh, in yeah, agreement I, I, I to get that on the agenda. So. Yeah. I make the motion of the motion that Mr. Scott is making to put it on the agenda for a full design to include lights, field house, bathroom, and concessions 
on the next agenda. Um, Christy, can you do a roll call, please? Or do we need, we need a second. Yes. So Mr. Scott made a motion. Is there a second? I second it, but do we? why do we need a design if we already got it from 2021? Why do we need a design? So my understanding, Mr. Bard, is that, that we have conceptual drawings, not actual designs that could go out to bid, and that the, the work that goes, uh, you know, I can check with what's on file. We with didn't have that before. I mean, we just sent the, the stadium out for bid. They passed all that stuff. That, I mean, we just sent that all out for I bid. I can check with K&W on what we have, technical drawings already done, you know, if that saves some, some cost. Right. So I don't want to... I mean, it seems like it's worth a conversation with the borough as well to see what they would need from us in order to determine whether or what they would require from us if we do those four things. I don't know if that's a addendum to the motion or whatever, but um, it seems like some communication might save us having to pay for a full design if all they need is what what we maybe already have from Can W. I think to vote yes to a full design i mean it would be on discussion but we don't know what that full what that design cost is and that's going to take longer to get it on to the next agenda i mean what i would be willing maybe it's changing your motion is to discuss next phase of maybe the lights not a full design but i would support maybe the lights so that the other athletic programs could benefit and the band could benefit. But, but then when the... Having a discussion with the borough of what, what that process looks like, what permits, what... For, for, for varsity football, have that discussion on the side? Tama. Uh, so Fred, I think there's two kind of points yeah. here. One would be, my understanding would be lights so that, that the other sports that are currently approved to play there and... Yes. and, and you know, could have an extended time that the field could be used. That's that's one thing, yes. um, which maybe we should make a recommendation to make that a motion, and then another motion on on what you described as is a, a full design uh, for the remainder of the stadium. No, that's so, so. If I can just make a real quick comment, I I don't have a problem with something being added to the discussion agenda. But my understanding, and help me out if I'm wrong, is that in order for the borough to approve our use of this facility for varsity football, a key part of that is they're making a determination about how much parking we need. And they are not willing, apparently, to make that determination without some quote unquote traffic studies being done during, and those have to be done during football season. So. If memory serves, the reason why we didn't sort of, I mean, one of the main reasons we didn't go f ahead with a traffic study in the fall was because this um, requirement was made sort of known to us right at the end of football season, and it wasn't like feasible to conduct the study at that point. And so part of the reason for moving forward is like, hey, we don't want to delay this project. Let's do what we can, and in the fall, when we're playing football and we'll, we'll get busy collecting the data that we need that the borough is going to require so that they can figure out our parking requirement. So we, can, we, could, we could approve this right now, I guess, but it's my understanding, and help me out if I'm wrong, that the borough isn't going to get very far in telling us, as you said, what we need to do to be able to play varsity football until we can study traffic situation in the fall. Superintendent, didn't you say that it's a that we had to count all the cars at a football game? Correct. That, that's not, so, that's so, not a traffic study. That's just counting cars. Uh, they qualified it as a traffic study in, in the, the addendums to the appro approvals that they gave us. That was so It would be a, you know, that, uh, there was different terminology that was used early on, Fred. You know, it comes down to basically a traffic study. They're counting cars. That's, yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I'm an expert in traffic studies, but that's, I think that's probably what their main goal is, is to find out what the... That was already done. Uh, Kirk, uh, uh, the borough manager, and uh, one of the borough board members counted all the cars at a football game at one time. 
So I know that was done. So I, I just I, I don't understand. That I'm not, I'm not, that, that. Yeah, that, that, I mean, as far as I'm aware, that did not satisfy the borough's requirement. But that's what I'm wondering. That's, I'm got, I got a different interpretation than what said the counting cars. That's, that's what I'm trying to, we'll know for sure. So, right so this would be a service that we would pay for, a company that does these sort of things? Um, you know, like I, the number is, I believe it was $8,000 to do this traffic study, car counting, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, that was the stipulation that, that they said. Um, you know, so I, I think it's a little more rigorous, um, you know, in terms of the process that they go through. Then I'll, then I know, I just, I just know about counting cars and, and the traffic study. I know a traffic study, you put cords down and you run over, run over top of them and count how many traffic. I don't know how you're going to do it at a football game because our entrance is too many. You got people living down here, going here and going there. This traffic study is not going to be able to give you a true count of what we have. Neither here nor there. If the lights are what it takes to get everybody to take care of most of our kids, then I'll go with the lights. That's a starting point. Well, this, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But no, no, no. Your motion. No, no. Uh huh. Uh, okay. Take the other motion out. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Put in put a new motion that we proceed with the lights this time to get that started. Give permission from the borough to get the lights if it's if it hasn't been approved. But I thought we had lights there. But that's why I want lights. Let's do the lights then. Is that what you, that you understand that? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's your motion, Mr. Yeah, Scott. I, I, I then I'll go with the lights. Okay, so to, to move forward in the process of getting lights at the new stadium. Yes. Okay. Is it to get it approved by the borough? Right. right. To, to or go if it's needed. Yeah. So it would be on the discussion. We can get that information even possibly by the next meeting to have that um, maybe an updated cost of, of the lights and are the conduits part of it's definitely part of the work that so we're doing part now. of that okay so the lights would make the most sense so point of order again fred made that motion i think we need a second and then after that i've uh so mr scott made the motion about the regarding the lights um is there a second to mr scott's motion i'll second that to second put lights up mr bard any further discussion so just to jump all for this lights and everything um but our timeline of completion, like I think you said, mentioned earlier, we're like three weeks out as bids are out for three weeks, right? So, and then we have to bring it back to the full board. Yeah. So theoretically, like it's really, like, we're not going to really get use of this athletic stadium in our fall sports seasons. It would be, it would be tough. We, we were never going to have yeah. that even on the time. So while I, I totally agree, and I think we should make, we should be, you know, have a vision as to what we're doing. I just think it's also important to understand, like, even if we say, like, which I, again, support us doing the, the groundwork for lights and all this stuff, just understand, like, this isn't going to happen. Like, we're not, it's not going to, we're not going to benefit from it. Like, it's not like we're going to do this and say, yep, and two months from now, we're like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to add with all this because. Right, right. To your point, Mr. Uh, Kressler, we would have to do the traffic study at a football game in the yeah. upcoming season, you know, as a preliminary step for those discussions. All that said, you know, Mr. Bard said it, Steph said it, Fred said it. The lights, I think, are a great idea because you get more usage time. Not, We don't want kids to be out. We just talked about school start times and everything. I certainly wouldn't want to be having kids practice till 10 o'clock at night, but it's routine during the basketball seasons and stuff in the wintertime. Teams practice till 8.30 at night anyway. Um, you, we talk about having, like, field hockey gets to go to the university maybe once a year to play a game up there under the lights. Those girls love that. It would be awesome for our middle school girls to be able to experience that. And, and so that's why I think it's important with, with lights. And there's also other things you can do. I think big picture community events, um, possibly outside graduation out here sometime would be awesome as well. Just all kinds of different things. I think lights just opens up another avenue for us. Um, so I would definitely be supportive of that, knowing that it's like not gonna happen, snap of a figure. And um, so that would be funded out of are you proposing that it be funded out of the fund balance that was allotted to? It's been there for six years. Fund balance, yes. Is that that's the money that was left from Greyhound? Greyhound Proud, or what? What was it called? Flagship Proud. Flagship, Flagship Proud. I don't. It just makes no sense to me why we're discussing about putting lights up. We don't have nowhere to play football in a year when the contract runs out. We have a place with lights. We can put 
5.6 million, 1.7 million together. We can renovate the track. We can renovate what we have. And in a year and a half or two, this conversation's over. I think that we're talking about athletic programs beyond just football. Um, soccer who literally doesn't have a level playing field out here. We can put in a turf field out here in this track. They also play evenings. Um, like currently, they're also at Memorial Park. Um, playing football there, like for certain. We can target to do that at some point. We have, we have nothing. There's nowhere they're going to play football. We can eventually. Nobody can tell me when that's going to that's be. What, that's what I was asking. I guess about. my they question. Have no target time when that's going to be, and this runs out in a year. With that amount around. of money, we can have the track. We can have a football stadium. It has all the amenities. We can put in a turf field out here in stands under for that price. We've priced it out on the numbers we have. You know, graduation out here. The band can practice out here, and we save possibly two, three, four, five million dollars. If this was going to be over five, ten million dollars to get it finished, we could have up to five million dollars saved to work for the elementary schools. Finish stuff we need up here. But the park. But we're going to be running in the red now. How much is going to cost to put, build down the park with a stadium in? We can renovate that stadium probably for two and a half million dollars. Never do it. Yes, we will. When we, when we were given a price before, it was well over in that two and a half, three million dollars because we get into like the ADA compliance. Back in 2021, I believe it was, when I first came on the board, we received a quote that was 14 million. So when is this going to be done for how much with having all that done? I mean, this board, I mean, Mr. Kressler had stated like even the, the 10 million was over, but that number down at the park was 14. well over that amount. So there are some false narratives and numbers being thrown around yeah. in the community about what it would cost to renovate Memorial Park um, that are simply not true. Uh, that comparison was not an apples to apples comparison either. They were putting a, a turf field down there. They weren't keeping the grass field. That, that 7.2 was a very nice facility down there. Not, and that was saying yes to that and no to anything up here. There was no ever, there was never a, a basic design at Memorial Park and then a stadium on campus. You want me to show it to you? I got a whole thick, thick folder. I've seen it too, Fred. Yeah, so, so there is a design. And that includes the yeah, track I seen and everything. No, 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 it doesn't. There. And all it's going to move, move the baseball field and the football stadium. That's all it is, nothing else. We can discuss I'm just going to call the question here. Um, there is a motion on the table. Uh, Christy, can you do roll call, please? Mr. Mike Carey. Hmm. I'd be glad to discuss where lighting's going, but I, I'm not sure what the motion is. What are we doing? For the lighting. Right. For the lighting. What is the actual the, wording the actual of the motion? The motion, as I understand it, Mr. Scott, and you please feel free to amend it, is um, to begin an analysis uh, of the cost and approvals needed for lights at the new stadium. On school property. On school property. To be funded, uh, and if approved, do we need to do that now? Like uh, the, At this point, I think we can. All right, that's can we get some representation from the borough to be present at one of our discussions so we can get back and forth or figure out what's going on? Because this is, I mean, it's exhausting having this conversation every meeting. I just we really need to make a headway on this. For, for the community's sake, too. I, I mean, we, we can invite them, you know, Mr. Donovan, I don't, I don't you know, certainly this, this forum is, so I think it's important to understand that the, the board meeting is to conduct board business. Um, you know, whether there needs to be a separate, you know, meeting with the borough that, that may be more advantageous, you know, maybe the facilities committee or another committee outreach perhaps could re meet with representatives of the borough. Um, it would be good for somebody, one of the committees, that I don't care who, but at least get a conversation going because it seems like there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, and to have nine members be not on the same page with this, it, I don't know, it, it shouldn't be this difficult. Like, we should all be on the same page. I'm not sure why we're not. Roll call. 
Mr. Mike Carey. What was the motion? <laughs> the, the motion is to just put his motion on the discussion agenda for the next board meeting. Which was to, uh, I believe I have to uh, find cost, uh, to determine cost and approvals requirements to get lights at the uh, stadium on campus. And I'll, sure. I'll fix that up Although, yes, <laughs> in the discussion. We can discuss that. Mr. Levi Kressler. Yes. Mr. Darren Donovan. Yes. Dr. Nathan Goats. Yes. Dr. Michael Lyman. Yes. Mr. Fred Scott. Yes. Mr. Jim Bard. Yes. Mrs. Steph Eberly. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Return. Uh, Mr. Carey, any board comments for you? No, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Kressler. Yeah, a um, couple of things. One, she said it earlier, but congratulations to uh, Arion, who was the MVP of the quiz bowl. Did they say at the state level? Is that what I heard? That's incredible. So congrats to him. I'm excited to see him. Hopefully he's here in two weeks. Um, other than that, um, one question. I saw the donation report. There's stuff about the first day ever, our best day ever, whatever it was. Can you? Can you uh, if sure. You can that? Um, so uh, our special needs students participate in Special Olympics. You know, that's kind of a regional consortium. Mm -hmm. uh, Shippensburg has had a tradition of doing kind of their own version of that, um, where you know, special needs students and regular ed students um, basically have a fun day of uh, competition and, and fellowship. Awesome. That's what I thought it was, but that's awesome. Uh, other than that, um, just some updates on some athletic stuff. Our track team competed in the Tim Cook uh, Track and Field Invitational this weekend. Derek Lynch uh, was, came in first place in the discus throw. Uh, the 4x400 four meter relay team of Skyland Runshaw, Ava Frontino, Luis Fisher and Alyssa Turn uh, also finished in first. Uh, Ms. Renshaw had a, a third place finish in the 400 meter. Bryce Patillo had a fourth place finish in the 400 meter. Julene Patton came in fifth in the pole vault. Ava Frontino came in fifth in the 800 meter. Xavier Rodriguez came in sixth in the 300 meter hurdles. Drew Chamberlain came in sixth in the triple jump. Victoria Kalp came in seventh in the long jump and the 100 meter hurdles. Alyssa Turn was seventh in the high jump and the 100 meter. Katie Shope was seventh in the 1600 and 3200. Andreas Dunkel, seventh in the 1600. And Cody Wenner was seventh in the javelin. And I think that was it for that day for the track team up there at the Tim Cook Invitational. Also, the baseball team is 2-0. They Since we met last, their season started. They had wins over Littlestown and Spring Grove. Softball's 1-1. One one. I think they won over Northeastern, lost to Hempfield. So, continued good luck to all those kids. I hear our track team's got a big meet tomorrow, so best of luck to them. Mr. Bard? Uh, I have none. Dr. Goats? Um, no comment. Thanks. So I had um, just a few things. Uh, evening and jazz was amazing. Um, it was a great night. If you ever get the opportunity to get out and see our students um, perform in any capacity, I highly suggest it. Um, one thing that I'm, I would like to propose is that I'm interested in exploring the alignment of our grading scale with that of the five surrounding districts around us. Currently, our district stands alone in utilizing a unique grading scale differing from the norms of ver observed in neighboring educational communities. Aligning our grading scale with those of our neighboring district not only promotes consistency and fairness in assessing student performance, but also ensures that our students have an equitable chance at attending the Franklin County Career and Technical School. By adopting a standardized grading scale, we can enhance the transparency of our assessment practice and fa facilitate smoother transitions for students moving between educational institutions within our region. So currently, um, of the six districts that attend the Career Tech School, Shippensburg is the only one that's using like that 92 to 100 percent is an A versus like the 90 to 100 percent is an A. Um, and speaking with the guidance counselor that is, you know, also partners with the Career Tech, there are some challenges when it comes to like GPAs and um, and to you know getting into the career tech. So I would like to 
explore those options. You know, if we're talking about changing start times in the, the 25, 26 school year, if we could look at the pros and cons of adopting the grading scale of those in our district, especially um, kids do move from district to district, so it is important that our grading scales align or they are comparable. But that's just um, kind of what I wanted to bring to light to see if we can get some conversations going around that. I like that. Thank you. I think that, Mr. Cross, when we were talking, you were like the last. I, th I think that I think our grading scale here changed my senior year, which was 2006. So I remember not liking it as a student going to 92. I mean, I'd be willing to listen to the justification for why it was implemented in the first place, but I've never understood it as a parent. I think it, it was kind of like just call call students higher to you know get that 92 percent as an A, but I assume it was grade inflation or something. Um, moving on to information date savers, April 2nd, the policy committee will be meeting April 8th. Uh, there is a budget and finance committee meeting prior to the committee of the whole, which is before the planning and action meeting. And on Thursday, March 28th, there is an act 80 day and students will have a two hour early dismissal. 